What is the difference between Microsoft Defender Antivirus and Microsoft Defender for Endpoint in products for software updates? Well, it uh, comes down to security features, really. Defender for Endpoint is the, the shiny edition, and Microsoft Defender is what you get for free. It's the Fiat versus Ferrari type from a security point of view. Yeah, so I think with the difference between those two within the software updates itself, with the standard Defender antivirus, you're going to be getting your definition updates for Defender are going to be coming down that way. Um, you'll also have with the Defender for Endpoint um, updates, that will have its own set of sensor updates that will come down um, separately because it identifies things differently than the standalone Defender uh, engine does. Um, so to Johan's point, if you don't have Defender for Endpoint in your environment, uh, you probably won't need to pull down those updates. Um, if you do, you can pull them down. Um, alternatively, um, as many of you have heard from me in the past, uh, take a look and see if your organization is um, happy with pulling down those definition and sensor updates from the internet rather than uh, through Config Manager. Um, Defender AV will get definition updates sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, same with Defender for Endpoint. You can also get those multiple times a day uh, as well. I mean, Defender for Endpoint, it's, it's more of a... Uh, uh, basically an DDR type solution. So Endpoint mm -hmm. and Response type solution. Um, I did stumble across an older blog post that kind of, uh, I think is worth sharing. Um, this one here, uh, basically as the name implies, understanding the different versions of Defender. And even though some names may have changed since, uh, the gist of it haven't changed. So uh, as the author uh, points out here, uh, basically it is, an entire platform it, it, it's it's there for threat hunting and advanced analytics and will give you recommendations um like if i would log into my security portal i have a few devices on board for defender for endpoint specifically uh and i have purposely crippled a few of those devices where i went in and installed both at a reader and Chrome and some other apps, and then went in to disable their auto updater. And, and then Defender for Endpoint got all mad at me and, and started to uh, give me warnings uh, about what's going on. So this is, of course, an, an entire solution rather than just an antivirus client running on, on the device. But this is where you have a lot of fun stuff that you can look into uh, in your environment. So a lot of fun stuff. Oh, yes. Here would be uh, the list of recommendations, for example. Where you can see that, yeah, I have a few devices I need to upgrade Notepad and 7-Zip and uh, probably a few recommendations on Chrome and Adobe Reader somewhere down here also. But long story short, this, this is a fairly large platform and that's what you're paying for when you buy either Defender for Endpoint separately or you buy it like we did as part of the Microsoft 365 Enterprise E5 uh, bundle of, of licenses. So in, in our environment, we or in one of our tenants, we have uh, just for, for demo and, and training purposes, we, we bought a few licenses to have them available. 
down in the building here. It's a little bit sluggish at the moment, but. So, uh, this one here, that's the one that gives us the fender for endpoint. And I know you bought some in your lab too, Andrew, the, the E5 ones. Oh yeah. So. Yeah, I will definitely share that link and uh, yeah. Yeah, you can get some pretty cool stuff out of this. I mean, it's interesting to see, um, you know, you really get, you're, you're starting to get into InfoSec type of stuff here. Um, but, you know, this platform shows some really interesting things, you know, people trying to, depending on how you implement it, <clears throat> you can find in Defender people trying to enumerate highly privileged groups in Active Directory and, uh, these vulnerability scans that Johan's showing, um, fantastic. This is super helpful if you're implementing uh, security baselines or if you're implementing uh, attack surface reduction rules in your environment. There are some great reports that show how devices are um, configured uh, for each one of those rules. Um, there's the advanced hunting feature in here that allows you to go in and do some Custo queries and uh, see when those ASR rules are getting triggered and who's logging in, you know, uh, who's authenticating to different devices. And it's, it's tons of information. <laughs> I could probably bumble about how much information you could get for another hour. Yeah, I mean, that was a good comment coming up here on YouTube. And that was just the fact that the inventory that you get from here is actually pretty good compared to the inventory you get from Intune for, for software. Now, Microsoft mm -hmm. is working on extending that or working on that, but this one has always been better at software inventory. So, yeah, good stuff. Definitely. And even some BIOS information, we showcased that a few times. If you go to the inventory, now I don't have any physical devices enrolled anymore, only a few virtual machines, but... Uh, in the uh, in the hardware and firmware node, this is where you get, if you have biases that are at risk, it will tell you if you have biases that are at risk or bias versions that are at risk. Mm 